Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about the law of cosines. So before this lesson, we learned about the law of sines, where as long as we had you know, a side and an opposite angle, and then another side and an opposite angle that we were solving for, or side that we were looking for, we were able to set up those ratios. Well, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to look at triangles where we couldn't use the law of sines, where we just did not have enough information in order to set up a proportion and the law of cosines, although it's a kind of wacky looking formula, it's really easy to plug in. The calculator does the work for us. I'm gonna be showing you how to plug it into your calculator to make sure you're getting all the correct values. And then we have our answer. So here's an example where we would need to calculate a missing side. So let's say I wanted you to find side A. And yes, side A is across from angle A, which is 41. But notice, I wouldn't be able to use law of sines here because I could say sine of a 41 over A is equal to, and then the moment I want to set up a ratio that, you know, I know an opposite angle inside with and I realize I don't have that, I wouldn't be able to use it. So law of cosines is what comes into play. So here's what we do to solve for a missing side. So the side that we're trying to calculate is A. And so the side that you're trying to find is gets squared, and that's the beginning of the formula. So the side that we're trying to calculate squared is going to be equal to the square of the other two sides added up, okay? So the sum of the other sides squared, so 10 squared plus nine squared. Does not matter which one you technically call B or C, but of course, um, across from angle B is side B, across from angle C is side C. So 10 squared plus nine squared. And then we do minus two times that B value times C, so two times 10 times nine, and then times the cosine of that angle. You see the cosine of the angle at the end of this formula always corresponds with the angle that's opposite the side we're trying to solve for. So since we're trying to solve for side A, notice that's the angle that gets plugged in here. So this looks a little funky, but mathematically it's pretty simple to solve as long as we do the things in the correct order. And order of operations always matters we always have to make sure we're taking care of things in the right order. So 10 squared plus 9 squared. So 10 squared is 100. 9 squared is 81. So we can go ahead and just do that part there. So 10 squared plus 9 squared is 181. Minus, now we can go ahead and do 2 times 10 times 9, which is 180, cosine 41. Now here at this point, it's either you can type this in one swoop if you're working with a graphing calculator or a really good scientific. Otherwise, you may need to do it in two different steps. So I'm going to type this into, let's say, the calculator that's on your laptop. This would be the same calculator as your um, phone calculator. And so if I was typing this in, I'd have to do 181 minus 180 um, times. Now remember, when you type in cosine 41 on here, you'd have to do 41 cosine and then press enter. And so I end up getting that A squared is equal to 45.152 and then to find the square root of it, since that's a squared, I would need to take my square root and I'm gonna to round to the nearest tenths and I get 6.7. If you are working with a graphing calculator, um, I'm gonna show you, you can just type this into one swoop. If you're working with like a TI-84 or 83, um, also if you're working with like one of the TI-30s, that's gonna let you type it in into one swoop as well. So now let's find another set of sides. So I've got two practice problems for us. So here it says x squared, um, so I'm solving for x. So here's what the formula looks like. So the side you're trying to solve for squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared, so seven squared plus nine squared, minus two times those sides of seven and nine times the cosine of the angle we're solving for. Okay, so that is the formula. So the side squared that we're solving for is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared minus two times those sides times the cosine of the angle opposite the side we're solving for. So seven squared is 49, nine squared is 81. So 49 plus 81 is 130 minus, let's do two times seven times nine. So two times seven is 14. 14 times nine is 126. And now I'm going to type this into my calculator. Again, I'm going to use the calculator that's on the laptop or what would be on your phone. So 130 minus 126 times, so I need to do cosine 85. So I'm going to type in 85 cosine, press enter. 
and I get 119.018. I need to then take the square root. So of course I'm gonna use my square root button and I get about 10.9, okay? Another example here, I need to solve for this side x. So this side is equal squared is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared minus two times eight and 12 times cosine of 65. So now eight squared is 64. Uh, one, uh, 12 squared is 144, add them up, I get 208. Two times eight is 16, times 12 is 192, cosine 65. And let me move myself over. So now let's type this in. So now this would be 208 minus 192 times 65, cosine, enter, I get 126.857, take the square root, and I get 11.3 rounded to the tenths place. Awesome. So the formula looks a little funky at first, but when you get into the groove and you see what the pattern is, it's pretty easy to use and set up. Okay, so then I want to show you what it means to actually use the law of cosines to solve for a missing angle. So here, if I wanted to solve for this angle, which I see is across from three, um, and I go to plug in my values here into this formula, the formula doesn't change. It's just now we don't know what cosine A is. We just are gonna call it cosine of X. So I know the side opposite the angle I'm trying to solve for is three. And so previously that, that three would have been what we were trying to find, and now we already know it. So in this case, three is actually gonna go in for A. So that's the side that we know. Um, and then it's still going to be equal to the squares of the other two sides minus two times four and six. But now it's cosine A or X. It doesn't really matter. So notice when we're trying to solve for an angle, the only place an angle even goes in this formula is after the cosine. So now I'm going to do my regular calculations. Three squared is nine. Four squared is 16. Six squared is 36. Add them up, you get 52 minus two times four times six, two times four is eight, times six is 48, cosine A. So now we have to, we're trying to get cosine A to be by itself, right? So I would have to subtract 52 on both sides. And then I would need to divide both sides by 48. And now if I do that, um, I end up getting negative 43 over negative 48 equals cosine A. And to find the angle, remember whenever we're finding an angle, we always use the inverse trig function. So we're going to say the, in, the inverse cosine, now negative 43 over negative 48, a negative divided by a negative is always positive. So this is really just 43 over 48. And so now when I go to type this into my calculator to do it, so I'm going to do 43 divided by 48, enter, and then I'm going to shift up or on your graphing calculator, you're going to click second so I can get my inverse cosine. And that's going to give me my angle measure, 26.4, if I round it to the nearest tenths. Awesome. Okay, good. Let's do two practice problems of this skill, finding a missing angle. Okay, that is good. Okay, so for this first one here, I'm solving for angle X, which is at B. Um, I know the opposite side is 6. So I'm going to start this with 6 squared equals the square sum of the squares of the other two sides, so 3 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 3 and 4, cosine b, or I can call it x, whatever. 6 squared is 36, then I've got 3 squared is 9, uh, 4 squared is 16, add them up, I get 25. 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24. Remember, the whole goal is to get cosine b now by itself. So I'm going to subtract 25. So I have 11 equals negative 24 cosine B. I'm going to then divide both sides by negative 24. Now to find the angle of B, I have to make sure I use the inverse cosine function. I know it's pretty light on my screen here, but it's the inverse cosine of 11 over negative uh, 24. So I'm going to do 11 divided by 24 negative equals, then I'm gonna, I'm still on my inverse cosine, and I get 117.3, okay? 
that angle would be 117.3 rounded to the nearest tenths. Now, something else that you're also going to notice is anytime you're actually plugging in a negative number, you're going to get an angle that's bigger than 90 degrees, which is pretty cool. It's going to be an obtuse angle. Anytime the fraction is uh, a positive, you're going to get uh, an acute angle. Okay, and now for my last one here. So I'm solving for this angle. So the side opposite for 4 squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus 2 times 3 and 6 cosine C. 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. 6 squared is 36. 2 times 3 is uh, times 6 is 36. I don't know why I did an extra step there. Subtract 45 on both sides. Divide both sides by negative 36. Remember, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I'm really doing the inverse cosine now of 29 over 36. So 29 divided by 36, inverse cosine, and I end up getting 36.3 degrees. So what we actually did here is we actually found the ang all the angles of this same exact triangle, this 3, 4, 6 triangle. Um, so 36.3 is C. 117.3 is angle B, and the first one we actually did was to find angle A, and it was 26.4, and if you add those three up, you get 180, which works out, obviously, perfectly. Thank you so much for watching this video. Bye.